In this video, I'll take the AirTag and show you how to convert it into an AirTag card for your wallet. Hello guys and welcome back to TechUp. Well, I won't be the first one or the last one to say this, but wouldn't it be great if Apple went ahead and created an AirTag card for your wallet and not only an AirTag puck that has to be on some key ring attached to some keychain. Well, in this video, I went ahead and created an AirTag card for myself since we know that Apple won't make one anytime soon that can fit in your wallet. Anyways, this card is pretty sleek and durable and it's also fully enclosed. So I'll show you how to take your AirTag apart and how to build an enclosure or card like this one where your AirTag will be enclosed in. And then I'll compare the thickness of the card as well as test out how it fits into several wallets at the end of the video. Now, before you plan on going ahead and taking apart the AirTag like me, you'll need several tools and items that will help you with removing the main board from the original plastic enclosure. The items that you will need for this part will be a small flathead screwdriver, a heat gun, soldering kit slash station, helping hands for soldering, and silicone wires as well as a pair of scissors. It's also essential to have a stainless steel cover or panel when you will be using the heat gun. Now, once you have all these tools, you'll first remove the battery cover for the AirTag as well as the coin battery. Once you've done that, you'll grab your flathead and start prying this area to remove the cover to the main board of the AirTag. This part is fairly easy. Once you get this removed, you'll see that the magnet for the speaker will be glued on this cover, and I removed it, so I'll be able to attach it to the speaker and coil of the AirTag later. As for removing the PCB from the antenna module, it's a little bit more challenging since it's glued on. Therefore, I went ahead and used the heat gun to soften the glue in order to remove the PCB. It definitely took some time, and you have to be careful not to break any of the components. So, I was fragile with removing it. However, once you remove this, you may notice some excess glue that may have been left on it, and here I removed the glue. I also went ahead and tested the battery with the AirTag to see if it works, and it thankfully did. Afterwards, I proceeded to cut the wires that I would need to solder to the connectors. I then tinned the center connector and center wire and soldered them on. Later, I tinned the side connectors and the small wire that would need to be soldered. Lastly, I added one more wire to the positive connection that would run parallel next to the black wire. Once I got everything connected, I went ahead and connected it with the battery and tested it out with the precision finding feature. And as you can see, it tracked its location. I also tested out the sound for it and it still worked. Knowing that I managed to get both things to work, I went ahead and started to build the enclosure. The tools and items I needed for this were a drill with a step drill bit, a rotary tool, super glue, some double-sided permanent tape, and a pair of small scissors, as well as a sharpie to outline where the cutouts would be on the cards. Lastly, the enclosure would consist of five blank PVC cards and a stainless steel card. I also went ahead and used a 2x4 to drill out the diameter of the battery and the PCB. The diameter for the battery was 13 16 of an inch, and the PCB was a little over an inch. I then started to drill out the holes in the card, and once I did that, I traced out the rest of the holes with a sharpie. And one by one, I drilled all the holes in the cards, and then realized that the rotary tool was going to be a great tool in matching up the holes with the rest of the cards, since the step drill bit wasn't as great as I thought it would be for me. Once I finished this, I stacked them up, and I saw that they were all cut out correctly and began tracing the area where the silicone wires would run to the battery. I cut this area out with a pair of surgical scissors and in the end all four cards were perfect, but I used a rotary tool to trim a little plastic off. After all that, I tested out the air tag in the enclosure and it was working. After playing around with the enclosure, I realized that the positive wire needed some room on the side of the coin battery for a proper connection. Since taping or placing the wire at the top would get in the way of the cover for the enclosure. So once I trimmed the side, I proceeded to super glue the cards together, but before that, I traced out the cutouts and one by one, I glued the cards on. 
Then, I slightly glued the PCB and the wires to the enclosure and proceeded to cut some double-sided permanent tape for the edges of the card. Last but not least, I took the fifth blank PVC card and used it as a cover for the enclosure. Afterwards, I tested out the tape and the card that covered the enclosure, and it turned out to do a great job of sealing it. Once I was done with building the AirTag card, I tested out the precision finding on it once again, and it worked perfectly. I was still able to easily track it down, and the speaker still worked well. All in all, I was happy with the outcome. I managed to go from 8mm on the AirTag to 5mm on the AirTag card. Clearly, I could have had a thinner enclosure since the AirTag, when it's fully taken apart, came out to a thickness of under 4mm. However, I wanted something that could be durable and still feel premium at the same time and not have a bump like an AirTag would. Also, I have to say that the AirTag card did pick up a good amount of fingerprints and small scratches with the stainless steel card on it. So just using a PVC card could make those types of things less noticeable. However, the durability of this card is great and it certainly will stay intact when dropping it. Also, the cover won't come off thanks to the strong double-sided tape holding it together. As for the last and final thing I wanted to check out with this AirTag card was which wallet it would be able to fit into. The first one I wanted to test out is the Fidelio Minimalist wallet that packs a chamber for cards inside. And on the outside it includes two card slots. Anyways, I tested out the card chamber and the AirTag card fit in perfectly. I also went ahead and tested out the outside card slot and the AirTag was able to fit into it, but you had to jam it in there pretty well. As for the second wallet, which is similar to a Ridge wallet, this AirTag card would be an easy fit as this wallet is meant for cards. So if you have one of these, it will be a perfect fit. Lastly, the Billfold wallet would also be a good wallet for this card because it would fit perfectly inside any compartment. But if you have this type of wallet, even a regular AirTag would fit fine. In the end, all the wallets seem like a great fit for the AirTag card. As for the AirTag by itself, the only one that seemed good for it was the Billfold wallet. Because there's no way of really adding an AirTag to a Ridge or Fidelio wallet since it's not meant for them. However, tell me what you guys think about this AirTag card. I'd certainly like to hear some feedback. If you guys like this video, please smash that thumbs up and subscribe button to see more content like this in the near future. Hope to see you in the next one.